Hello, welcome back to CS11. This is lecture number 12 where we'll talk about functions. Now, what is a function? A function is one of our primary mechanisms for taking an entire program and breaking it into pieces that can operate independently. Well, why would you want to break a program into pieces? Well, if you look at any complex organized structure, such as a, a car or a spacecraft that's made of thousands or even millions of components, it's a great advantage to be able to test the various components separately. And if one piece breaks, then it can be replaced. And functions serve a similar role in programs that can be made of thousands or millions of components or pieces that are working together. In the past, we've used functions in our programs, such as pow, square root, rand, or get line. And each one of our programs has had one function that we've written, main. And in the past, we've coded our entire program so that it lived in main. But going forward, we're going to want to divide the tasks that our program performs into various functions. There are several general guidelines that I want to tell you about. First of all, we don't want to mix input and output throughout the program. We would like to have one place in our program responsible for communicating to the user. Main is a great place to do that. So going forward, one thing to consider in your programs is to put all of your input, C in, and all of your output, C out commands, in main. Other general guidelines that you might want to follow for a function are that it should fit on the screen so you can see the entire function at once when you're looking at the program, and also that you should be able to describe what the function does in one sentence without using the word and. If you find that you're trying to describe what a function does and you use the word and, then maybe that suggests that that one function is doing two separate tasks which should actually be handled by two functions. One function should handle one task. The way that, for example, pow calculates the power or square root calculates the square root and that's it and that's all they do. Alright, now there are three parts to a function. two of which we'll talk about today. The first part is the declaration or definition of a function. This is where you describe what the function is and how it works. The second part is known as the function call or invocation. This is where you call the function or activate it so that it performs its task. The third part that we'll talk about later, not in this video, is known as the prototype or the header. Let's talk about the declaration of a function. When you declare a function, first of all you have to give it a name and just like variables, the name of a function should be descriptive, should tell you what it does. Here, for example, a function called findMax. Next is the return type of the function, which comes in front of the function name. Many functions, most functions that you'll code, return a value. For example, pow and square root are functions that you called that gave a useful value back to you that you could do something with. Occasionally, functions will just perform a task and not return a value to you, and we'll be interested in calling them just so that we can perform that task. I'll show you an example of that coming up in our program. The next thing is a pair of parentheses followed by any parameters or input that you want to send to that function. For example here, using a comma separated list, I'll list two integers named a and b that I want to send to this function. Then you have a pair of curly braces that enclose all of the commands that are associated with that function. And then typically you'll have a return statement. And that return statement is mandatory if the function has a return type. And so here is where we would return some value. And the value that we return has to be of this type. Then we could code any commands in here that we needed 
in order to calculate the value or perform whatever task we wanted this function to do. Now here, a and b are declarations of variables, and these, along with any variables that we declare in here, are known as local variables, meaning that they exist only locally here in this function, and we can't refer to them elsewhere in the program. All right, well here I have a starter program, and let's code a couple of functions. Now, functions have to be declared each individually. Here's the declaration of the main function, like we've seen in each of our programs. If we were going to declare other functions, they would need to come either before it or after it. I'm going to put the functions before main, and we'll talk about why the location might matter later on. First, let's write a function that does not return any useful value. I'm going to write a function called void greet string name and it's going to say see out hello name. About as simple a function as you can imagine and now I will call it here from main and I'll say greet Steve. Here I'm passing it a string literal, my name in quotes. Here I'm providing a parameter or argument in quotes, my name, Steve, it's a string literal. And that will be transmitted and when this local variable here, name, is created in this function, it will be initialized with this value that we've associated with. Let's compile and run the program. And notice here it says, hello, Steve. Now we could also pass it a variable. So for example, string name equals Steve, and here we'll pass it this variable. Notice this variable here is named name, and this variable is named name. Those are two separate variables. This name variable exists in this function, and this one here exists in this function. And here we see the program works as expected. Let's code another function. This one is going to have an int return type, and I'm going to call it max of 2. And it's going to take two integers, which I'll call a and b. And here, we'll do a test. If a is greater than b, return a. return b. So here, this function is going to accept two parameters, a and b. And this function is either going to return the value of a or b, depending on which was larger. Notice that if it's true that a is greater than b, then it will return a. If b is less than or equal to a, then this test will fail. This command here will not execute and this one here will execute, and the function will return b. Here, we can test that function, max of 2, 4, and 5. And I'll go ahead and save, and compile, and run the program, and here we see 5. Let's change this to 41, save, recompile, and run, and now we see 41. This will, would also work if we had variables. So if we had variables x and y, then we could list here x and y to find the maximum of those two values. Once again, compile and run, and there we see the results. All right, well that wraps up our first look at functions in C++.